In this video, I'm going to uh, use RayLab on the iPad to uh, look at the behavior of a simple lens. So we'll start a new model by tapping the plus sign on the top right. And that gives us a new blank canvas. You can see that we have an object with some rays coming off of it and an image screen, which I can move around or rotate with two fingers. I can use the undo button to set everything back to its original position. And now I'm going to add my lens by tapping the plus sign. I have a catalog of different um, optical elements that I can choose from. And I'm going to just choose the simple biconvex lens. I could go ahead and add more components here. You know, I can just put a, another uh, concave lens. but uh, we don't want this one right now, so I'm going to just select it and use the trash can to delete that. You can see that by tapping near the center of a lens, I can move it around. I can also use two fingers to rotate it. And if I tap the second surface and drag that around, I can change the thickness of the lens. Again, let's uh, use the undo button to set everything back to where it was before. Okay, now I'm going to tap on the gearbox, which is the options menu. And let's scroll down to source options. And you can see here I can change the number of wavelengths that I'm displaying. Go back to two. You can reduce the number of source points just to one, so it's a little bit clearer what you're working with. And let's increase the number of fans to about, say, 10. Now I'm going to move things around a little. Zoom out. Get my image frame out. Move the lens. And I'm going to actually move the image frame so that it's roughly at the focus of the lens. And if I go back to the options menu, you can see that I can control how spread out the fan is using the slider here. And let's just make sure that all of the rays are hitting the lens. So this is my simple system, point of light going through a lens and focusing on the image plane. Now let's see how good that focus is. So we can go back to the options menu and scroll down to the analysis window. And one of the choices here is the fan ray plot. And this basically shows, as a function of the angle of the ray in the fan, how well it comes to a focus on the image plane. And to make the plot work out smoother, I can increase the number of rays, say 20. And you can see that the center beam is hitting at the center of the image plane. And then as we move away from the center ray, uh, things aren't coming up to such a great focus. So to fix that, you can go ahead and try and modify the shape of the lens a little. Let's uh, zoom in on the lens. I'm going to select the first lens surface, and then I'm going to tap the lens icon in the toolbar. So you can see here I have a whole list of lens surface property options. We can adjust the radius, which is basically how large the lens is. I can also just tap in the text box and type in a number, so I can set this back. I can adjust the edge of the lens, because this is the sort of the flat rim around the lens. We don't really want any. We can change to different types of materials. And uh, you also can control the shape of the lens. If you move the power slider, both lens surfaces are adjusted together. And if you use the shape factor, you can change whether the lens is symmetric, or plane or convex, or a meniscus lens. So let's go back to symmetric, and I can just give it a setting this to zero. And if I just want to adjust 
this particular surface, I can use the surface shape coefficients. These describe the equation of an A sphere. And by changing the first one, which is the radius of curvature, you can see how you can change the focusing. And by the way, as I uh, move my finger above or below the slider, the slider sensitivity uh, increases. So let's uh, set this out about here. And what I would like to do is I would like to try to make sure these ones are as straight as possible. That's if I'm going to remove my spherical aberrations. So I'm going to use the A4 coefficient. And I'm going to adjust that. And I'm going to move my finger so that the slider is sensitive. And I'm going to gradually adjust this until the, those flat lines. And now if I go back to the radius of curvature and tweak that a little bit, I can get, uh, you know, some symmetric behavior between the blue and the red wavelengths. Now let's go to our position sliders. And you can see that I can move the lens back and forth. And as I move the lens say, to this position, at this point the blue beam is not in very good focus. And I can verify that by going to the options and looking at the spot diagram. And so you can see the blue spot is in very good focus. The red wavelength is not focused very well. Now, an alternative view is the filled spot diagram, which just sort of shows you the field region. And of how that spot looks on the image screen. By the way, you can also switch between the analysis window plots by using these little arrows right in the sides of the analysis window. Okay, next let's uh, go back here and we're going to reduce the number of fan rays just so I get something that I can update more quickly. And notice that as I move the lens around, the spot diagram axes are rescaling. If I don't want that to happen, I can tap this little lock icon. And now the axes stay fixed. And that gives me a better sense of how the size of the spot is changing as I move the lens back and forth. And now let's see how this lens does off axis. So if I zoom back out here, notice that right now I can't move my object away from the optical axis. So to change that, let's go back to the options menu and turn off the option for locking to axis. Now I can take the object and move it up and down. But as I do that, Notice that the rays are still pointing straight ahead. So what I would like to do is go to options again and turn on the option for aiming the rays at the pupil. What this does is make sure that the rays are always pointing towards the entrance pupil of the system. And now this slider, instead of describing angle, it's just describing the fraction of the pupil that's covered. So let's increase that slider a little. Now you can see that as I move my object up and down, the rays are always aiming at the pupil. And you can see how the rays, how the spot is distorted when the object is off axis. And this is an example of coma aberration. Okay, that's it for this demo. I hope you have lots of fun learning about optics using Raylab.